Hey guys, you better come look at this. Ah, hello World Wide Web, I'm Rebecca Shadow, the internet personality of the best hair. And I was recently asked if I ever thought about reviewing something a little more light-hearted, but honestly, what out there is campier than a good old-fashioned horror movie? Horror movies are a roaring good time if you ask me, but if humor is more up your alley, there is always that subgenre out there affectionately referred to as horror comedy. Combining over-the-top antics, silly gags, and hilarious situations with comedy. So this is the movie we're going to be looking at today, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. This one is from back in 2010 and follows a small group of cognitively impaired college students as they are terrified by a scary pair of hillbillies. And vice versa. So let's take a look at Tucker and Dale vs. Evil and see how you can take the same setup for 90% of all horror movies and somehow keep it fresh. We open up to found footage. A reporter, played by Sasha Craig, pokes around a crime scene, only to be jumped by a madman who kills the cameraman. Writer director Eli Craig, and then. Or before then. We, we just had to really quickly point out that this movie with blood and chainsaws all over the DVD cover might get a tad dark, just so you know. Anyway, three days prior, we have an opening shot from without a paddle, planting our group of teenagers in West Virginia, Canada, where they almost wind up in an accident! Chad, played by Jesse Moss, takes the opportunity to point out that the pickup was likely owned by hillbillies, the inferior people. You're either Omega Beta or you're a freak. Omega Beta! Omega Beta! Omega Beta! I'm in a car full of morons. Par for the course, you're in a horror movie. I'm surprised that thing's even running. But before they know it, the hillbillies pass them, creepily looking at the college kids and not the road, but even worse. We forgot the beer. No! Ah, oh, sweet hell, that increases our chances of survival tenfold. We can't have that. As such, they must stop. Out in the sticks, there aren't all that many options for rest stops, so it shouldn't be all that surprising that upon entering Last Chance Gas, they find the hillbillies are here as well. One gives them the stink eye by the register, but then Allison, played by Katrina Bowden, <coughs> was being leered at by the other one. Just what is he trying to do? Buy a jar of pickled eggs, of course. A decision he will live to regret, as Dale, played by Tyler Levine, had to eat quite a few of them during multiple takes of this scene, making for quite a few painful outtakes. You got the fire. Shit. There goes the pickled eggs all over the back of the truck. We just still got some fire. Oh God. Eat those, damn it, Tucker. Nevertheless, he and Tucker, played by Alan Tudyk, were here buying landscaping equipment, but they need to stop to talk about the cute college girls. Dale's not exactly a ladies' man, and Tucker is more interested in helping him find some confidence in himself, not be so pessimistic and defeatist with everything. Just put himself out there. What's the worst that could happen? Whatever you say, just smile and laugh. That shows confidence. Just in case anyone out there is wondering how in the hell a hottie like Harley managed to fall for Joker of all people. You guys, uh, going camping? <laughs> What's this? The girls are not smitten with Dale's charm, but horrified, and Chad jumps in to protect the group and get his ass out of there. Which means he still did a lot better than I ever did trying to socialize. As such, he doesn't get their number as they flee in terror. I told you, Tucker. I'm a zero with the ladies. I hate my face. Okay, okay, Dale, calm down. Now, your face, it is a bit of a problem, but come on, these girls, they seem the sporty type, cute. Canadian, try a hockey mask. No problem, that's hardly their top priority right now anyway. The police are on their tail. So, gotta clean the beer up, but whoops, Dale's shirt gets caught in Tucker's pants. One thing leads to another and... Yeah. Howdy, officer. Hi. Well, at least it provides an alternate explanation for any swerving you might have seen. The sheriff, played by Philip Granger, asks where they're going, hearing that Tucker spent all his money buying a vacation home by Morris Lake, but upon hearing that that is where they are headed. There ain't nothing up there but pain and suffering on a scale you can't even imagine. Oh shit, that's where they're hiding the headquarters of Twitter? 
Anyway, your blinker's out, but I got looked at. So, that was weird, but they don't have to worry. They got everything they need. Beer brand beer, their truck, their boat, and a handy-dandy wood chipper, just in case. Last but not least, the summer home. It looks to have been abandoned for decades, but is otherwise absolutely amazing. And strange, with bones hanging around and news clippings about murders, missing teenagers, and most importantly... Chubby's Chili Dog Depot. Buy three, get two free, no expiration date. All right. I wonder how their chili dogs stack up against Farmer Vincent's fritters. What is this is everything they could have hoped for. Nothing but good times ahead. Dreams really do come true. Oh, oh look out! Oh! Well, I guess we should fix that. Fix? <laughs> nah, just figure out how to work around it while it's still broken and you're good. In the meantime, the kids are out camping. Chuck, played by Travis Nelson, wants to tell a scary story. So everyone, knowing his stories suck, shut him down before he can start, giving plenty of time for Chad to tell a spooky campfire story. Seems 20 years ago, in these very woods, there was the Memorial Day Massacre! Horrifying and evil hillbillies slaughtered helpless college students just like them! So, hearing the tales of terror and death that surround them, only one question remains. Who wants to go skinny dipping? I do. <laughs> Standard horror movie procedure. Still waiting for the comedy to kick in. Somehow, the walk to the lake takes all the way until nightfall, and it just so happens that Tucker and Dale are doing a little night fishing. The beer brand beer has been exchanged for a good old PBR, and the college students begin skinny dipping! Skinny-ish, there's only one topless lady and she's way in the back in wide shots. Therefore, Tucker wants to get a closer look, but Dale is too innocent for this. Tucker! Frightening Allison once again and causing her to scream and lose her footing. Also, it's something like 40 degrees Fahrenheit when they were filming that night, so falling into that lake was actually a lot scarier than it looks. Doubly so when the two of them notice that she hasn't come back to the surface. So, moving in to save her, Dale dives in and they pull Allison up into the boat in clear view of everyone. Ah, we got your friend! Oh God! They got Allison! <laughs> Damn it, every time I try and flag someone down, the soundtrack is playing spooky music. Getting her back to her friends seems to be out of the question, so they opt to bring her back to the cabin to nurse her back to health. So she wakes up alone in a weird room, wearing weird clothes with a weird dog. Jangers, played by Weezer. This keeps her put while her friends are trying to figure out what those weird guys did with her. Tell them what you saw. Well, it was really dark, but it looked like one of the guys was like, eating her face off. Dale is trying to give Allison CPR and, well, when viewed from a certain angle. The obvious thing is to go to the cops, so of course Chad takes the role of leader and is like, no police, they won't help anyway. That's stupid though, so Chuck gets to go back on his own with the car and get to the police. At this point, Jason, played by Brandon J. McLaren, discovers the cabin. What evils lie inside? Dale, who made breakfast for their guest, explaining he saved her and her friends all screamed and ran. It quickly dissipates any apprehension she was feeling about the situation. Oh, that, oh that's Drangers. That's my dog, Drangers. He, he looks mean, but he's just a big old marshmallow. You can just pat him around the nose. And evidently, Weezer lost that eye in a run-in with a porcupine. That's just nature. So, just waiting for her friends to come so everyone can get back together again. No reason to spend the time just sitting around, though, as Allison asks if they have anything to do, and Dale jumps at the chance to play his favorite board game. Trivia up. It's like Trivial Pursuit, but without the licensing fees. Her friends are nearby, of course, and Mitch, played by Adam Bouches, drew the short straw and has to approach the house, spooked out of his mind. And as it just so happens, Tucker is outside clearing stumps and just so happens the chainsaw right into a beehive, causing him to run out there screaming and flailing his chainsaw all over the place. Mitch flees into the woods with Tucker running past him. This is where the movie clicked for me. Up until now, it was, you know, a fun enough horror comedy with little horror nods and plenty of comedy, but here, where Mitch just fucking straight up dies gruesomely and horrifyingly, that is when I knew the horror was taking itself seriously. The only two who managed to completely avoid this situation were Dale and Allie, as she is amazed at how crazy good Dale is at trivia up. 
Yeah, it seems the reason Dale is a bit awkward is that he's kinda on the spectrum. It also just so happens that Ali was studying for a degree in psychology, so the intricacies of the human mind are kind of her jam. Solve conflicts through mutual understanding. Speaking of conflicts, Tucker's home stung up the wazoo. Possibly literally. And none too pleased that Dale's been relaxing in here rolling dice with the co-ed. We came out here to work. No, I shouldn't have played stupid board games! Oh, that's just what happens when you try and organize your stuff and find all the toys. There's that side quest, though, of getting Allie back to her friends. Thus, Tucker and Dale head out while she stays at the cabin to rest. In the meantime, her friends have found their friend! Dead as shit! Most of them are terrified, but Chad is fired up. It's a showdown! Evil hillbillies versus heroic college kids! A showdown that can come later, as when they hear Tucker and Dale approaching, they quickly find a place to hide. Miraculously, our heroes don't seem to notice the dead guy sticking out of a tree, but they figure the college kids did come by this way, so they'll leave him a note and let him know everything's okay. <laughs> Hold on there, Tucker. The, the, the wood on bark ain't very really legible. You got some paint? Well, I guess a little blood will do. So it's back to the cabin and back to work. Allie is feeling better as well, and as luck would have it, she just so happened to have grown up on a farm and is more than happy to help Dale dig a hole for the outhouse. He's so impressed, he can't help but just stand in awe at her as she works away. That sick fuck, he's making her dig her own grave. <laughs> that makes the outhouse that much more disrespectful. Though it would be a place the police would feel less inclined to check. Chad believes they have no time to lose. He orders the group to split up and attack the hillbillies from multiple directions. Thus, Mike, played by Joseph Allen Sutherland, closes in on Tucker, while Todd, played by Alex Arsenault, rushes forth to spear Dale! Man, people rolling a lot of ones today. As such, Mike goes in for Tucker, but instead dives headfirst into the wood chipper, which spews his blood all over Chloe. Played by Shelley Simmons. Are you okay? Are you kidding? That was awesome! Man, I like that so much. I should like this video. And subscribe if I haven't already. <laughs> wood chipper kill! Woo! Luckily for Ali, she was knocked out for most of this, but that does mean that Tucker and Dale have to try and piece together what the fuck just happened. Best they can figure is that her friends came out here with some kind of ritualistic suicide pact. That's the only reason they'd be killing themselves like this, but maybe they're trying to kill Allison as well. Dale thinks they should tell the police, but Tucker points out the futility of telling the police that college kids are killing themselves all over the property that they happen to own. He would have to be a moron to believe that, Dale. It doesn't matter what happened. What matters is what looks like what happened. And at the moment, it looks like you two are trying to audition for an episode of Unsolved Mysteries. So the best they can do is clean everything up before anyone gets any funny ideas. Not that Chad is too upset, anyway. He sees this as an opportunity to prove themselves in the face of evil. They don't need the help of the police, anyway. Uh, oh, would you look at that? Chuck has returned with the sheriff! Hearing that those dastardly hillbillies have been killing their friends, he drives down to their cabin to discover them cleaning up cadavers. Not to worry, Tucker calmly explains that it just so happens that these random corpses are just those crazy college kids who have been randomly deciding to kill themselves all over the property that they happen to own. You must think that I'm some kind of moron to believe a story like that. Well, no, 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 of course not. But we did set up a GoFundMe in case you'd want to help pitching in for the cleaning costs. Dale is also worried they might be trying to kill Allison, the friend of the college kids who they took and put up in the cabin. She can maybe explain the whole thing. If, 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 uh, if I hadn't knocked her unconscious with a shovel. <laughs> On accident. On accident. Honestly, that's probably how the police reports sound after the end of most slasher movies. The sheriff wants to see the girl and make sure she's okay, so he has to enter the cabin. Alone. The college kids are terrified, but it's fine. This is Tucker and Dale, after all. They don't have a cruel bone in their body. They say they aren't trying to hurt anyone, but it still don't look that great. Looks can be deceiving. Oh, no, no! Ah! Oh, no! Ah! Ah! Ah, I love it when a line works poetically on so many levels, and a man's brain is impaled in four places. Surprisingly, he's still standing after that. 
Unsurprisingly, he's not thinking the straightest with nails going through the lobes, going for the radio, failing to call anything in, and tearing it out of the car. No bother, Chuck can grab his gun and take the hillbillies out. Except for one problem. Oh, we gotta take the safety off on the side there. Don't do ah! And revolvers don't have safeties, but we can let this slide. After all, this is a horror comedy poking fun at these kinds of horror movies. And in these kinds of horror movies, guns are whatever the heck the plot calls for at the time. As such, Chad dives in, grabs the gun, and begins firing away at them! Firing and firing, because it's not out of ammo until the characters acknowledge that. Think of it like cartoon logic. No time to dwell. Chad has Jangers held up at gunpoint. No bother, Tucker can go free him, while Dale provides covering fire with the handy-dandy nail gun. Hi, I never shot at nobody before. If it helps... Think of them like moving two by fours. That's gonna bring an interesting twist to the log cabin project come summer. So the shootout begins! Nail gun versus 357 Magnum! Out of ammo and out of options, Chad threatens to shoot Jangers! But in the confusion, Tucker slips in and frees him! Right in front of the college kids. So he must run! Tripping into some mud, Tucker covers himself up, hiding from the predator. But unfortunately, despite all evidence to the contrary, Chad is still human, stringing him up! This is for Mike. No! That is ah! Ah! And this is for Todd. <laughs> Ow! And this is for Mitch! <laughs> now what in the hell are a bunch of college kids gonna be doing with an assortment of toes, fingers, and genitalia? Find out next time, as right now Ali is coming too, and Dale has to explain to her exactly what's going on as efficiently as possible. Do some of your friends take medication? Why? Because I think they forgot to take it. I really don't think Chad's inhaler would have prevented this. Doubly so, as he's been keeping up with it pretty well all movie. Explaining her friends are trying to kill Tucker and Jangers, she says that's not who they are. Nobody wants to hurt you. Die, that sure sounds like someone does. Like maybe he just wants you to experiment with new hair colors. Ever think about that? Going out to see what's up, Allison finds piles and piles of dead bodies, along with a little gift. Tucker's fingers, and a note beckoning Dale to come meet his doom. Oh, well, that's that then. Misunderstanding or not, Dale has to save Tucker from these asshole kids. Allie's apprehensive, but honestly, Dale is heartbroken over the entire situation. I should have known that if a guy like me talked to a girl like you, somebody'd end up dead. That kind of relationship turns heads just a bit too much. Thus, Dale heads out. Not too surprising, Tucker was set up as a trap! One that fortunately was not quite on the mark, leaving Dale's dangly bits unscathed. However, while Dale was out rescuing Tucker, Chad snuck into the cabin along with Naomi, played by Chrissy Lang. They are here to rescue Allison. But of course she insists she doesn't need rescuing, and they got it all wrong. Dale's actually a really sweet guy. I remember reading about this in my sociology class. It's called the Stockholm Syndrome. When someone who's been kidnapped ends up falling in love with their kidnapper. Giving Chad a shocking revelation! All these getaways and pickup lines were never going to work, and all he really had to do this whole time was stuff her in a trunk for a few days. Chad starts to get worryingly aggressive, questioning Allison about what exactly her relationship with Dale is. But then Tucker and Dale show up, giving Allison the chance to get everyone to calm down. This whole movie has just been one big misunderstanding. How about I make some tea and and we all sit and, and talk this out? Oh, yeah, yeah, this sounds like a good idea. I'll provide the finger sandwiches. Look, Tucker, we can argue about who cut off whose fingers until the cows come home, but let's just agree to have a little amnesty here. Understandably, Tucker isn't feeling the most diplomatic right this red hot minute, but Dale is willing to give Allison's methods a shot and sits down to chat over a nice cup of tea. Is that chamomile tea? Because I can't have that. It fucks with my asthma. It, it's Earl Grey. Oh, I love Earl Grey. That's great. Oh yeah, well we ain't gonna reach a peace agreement until you get me some Dr. Pepper over here. You call yourselves civilized. Allison tells them to each say their side of the story and work hard to try and empathize with the other's perspective. That out of the way, Chad launches into a tirade about the Memorial Day Massacre from 20 years ago. Hillbilly slaughtered college kids, and only one survivor made it out. 
His mother. He never even got to meet his dad. He never made it out. Only her and the trauma left her institutionalized. He ended up having to be raised by his grandmother who shared with him that horrifying tale. I didn't have anything to do with that. Okay, I, I mean, I, I would have been six years old at the time, yeah, so. Well, it may not have been you, but it was definitely your kind. Okay, kids, you got that? Prejudice is bad. And we're really saying something profound here. But during their chat, Jason and Chloe close in. Something has been taking Chad way too long and Jason figures they must be held prisoner. So it's up to them to burst in and save the day. It's showtime, freaks! By flailing wildly with garden tools until we kill another one of their friends. <laughs> Guys, there's only two hillbillies. If you just run into the dark and kill the first person you come across, the odds aren't in your favor. This is the distraction Chad needs, though. Attacking Dale and slapping Allison. So Tucker punches him in the face before Chad throws a lantern, lighting Jason on fire. And Chloe tries to put him out with turpentine right next to the big stockpile of gasoline. So they must run, Tucker, Dale, and Allie being the only ones to barely escape the explosion. Though, uh, it's not to say that they only wants to survive it. Maybe we should help him. <laughs> ah! Never mind, let's just go! And I'm pretty sure at this point there's no alternate explanation for what's going on here. <laughs> Unless we quickly change angle and find out that Chad just stubbed his toe. Hopping right into the truck and driving away, our heroes aren't taking any chances. That is, unless you count not bothering to look at the road, because BAM! Dale crashes the truck, and when he comes to, it seems that Chad attacked while he was unconscious, kidnapping Allison and wounding Tucker. It's not all bad. Tucker can hype Dale up for the big, epic, character-defining, heroic moment. You're smart. And you're strong. And you're not as ugly as you think you are. Considering how much pain he's in and how long he spends pouring his heart out to Dale here, it shouldn't surprise you too much to find out that originally, Tucker was supposed to die in this scene. Yeah, that recoil you just felt, everybody felt that, which is why that ain't what happens. In order to find out where to go, they do just so happen to have that handy dandy dog, Jangers! Thus, Dale heads out alone to the secret location of the epic final confrontation. I mean, he's got Jangers, but now that the track job is over, he can get out of here. It's climax time. He suits up, spurs, and supports in a motherfucking chainsaw. For Chad has taken Ali to a sawmill, tied to a plank, and about to be sawed in half. Oh, Rabbit comes out of the train. Rabbit goes around the train. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus, I hope it's one of those safety saws that shuts off when it detects flesh, because otherwise this ain't looking so good. Especially when Chad kicks Dale out of the way, so they must fight. Interestingly enough, they did have stunt fighters for this scene, but in editing they figured they didn't look convincing, so instead we get mostly just close-up shots of Tyler and Jesse. Either way, the deft axe throw is all Dale needs to save Allison in the nick of time, before holding Chad off with a chainsaw, allowing them to escape into the office. Unfortunately, there's not much here in terms of weaponry, but they do just so happen to find a handy dandy news article about the Memorial Day Massacre. It seems the killer that day looked an awful lot like Chad. That's because his father wasn't killed in the massacre. The hillbilly psychopath was Chad's dad all along. And at least this gives them something to distract him when he barges in trying to kill him again. You're half hillbilly. It can't be. Uh, yeah, that, that's not how it works. Uh, hillbilly ain't a race. It's a class. If pop collar of spray tan college city boy over here is half hillbilly, and I'm a billionaire CEO. Well, this ain't gonna stop him from killing them, but you know what will? Chamomile tea! Triggering his asthma and rendering him helpless. But he'll be okay as long as we get him his inhaler. Oh! Ah! Oh, and a bungee cord. Oh, yeah. Before that. Therefore, happy ending! The news crew reminds us, oh yeah, we watched Chad kill these two in the opening. But you know who didn't die? Tucker. He's even got his fingers back. Or some fingers back. And is ready and waiting just in case they ever get around to making a sequel. Dale and Allison hit it off, and he's even confident enough to tell BJ, played by Bill Baxa, that if he wants a hot young college girl like super stud Dale over here, he ain't got nothing to be afraid of. Just go up and start a conversation. BJ! Oh, 
god. Should we go help her? Hell no. And the body count rises. Anyway, that was Tucker and Dale versus Evil. And I gotta say, thank you all for insisting that I watch this movie. Oh, sweet diggity dog, that was a grand old time. Horror comedies are an easy genre to screw up, and I'm pleased to report that not only did Tucker and Dale vs. Evil pull it off, it's quite possibly the best dang horror comedy I ever did see. Which is interesting when you consider that the keys to a good horror and good comedy are certainly complimentary, suspense, and surprise. The entire backbone of Tucker and Dale vs. Evil is a subversion of expectations, taking the now familiar setups of hillbilly horror and giving the situations a different perspective. It works great for both angles. And the horror angle doesn't disappoint either. It's legit with gruesome fates for unsuspecting young adults left and right. But beyond just doing a good job with the genre, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil manages to go above and beyond as a movie itself. The whole story is about differing perspectives and the problems that stem from the prejudices people hold. Dale learning to believe in himself, Tucker really opening up in support of his friend. There's simply a lot of good stuff going on in the subtext. Not to say it's flawless, a lot of minor issues can be excused as homages to the genre it's poking fun at, which is known for more than a few minor issues, but things can get clunky, swapping classism for racism feels kind of forced, and the opening might have made a better after credit scene. But despite what issues I can find if I dig hard enough, I absolutely loved this movie. Coming in at five, stupid college kids diving into wood chippers! Out of five. Because come on, the wood chipper itself is worth a whole extra star right there. I don't care what anyone says. Thank you all for watching. I have Medeka Shadow. And remember, there will be no peace until we can get some Dr. Pepper over here. You've got another one inside, and, and you say she's unconscious? Yeah, she's in my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Still time to like the video, or, or subscribe if you haven't. Or hey, there's, there's no reason to stop watching. I've got 10 years worth of movie reviews for you to check out. Hey, you like horror comedies? Hey, Zombie Dearest Over, that's an old one. I reviewed that a while ago. That Actually, uh, actually, there's also the algorithmically selected recommended video, and uh, I'm being honest with you, you got better odds of a good movie with that one, so uh, yeah.